Welcome back to Amazing People. This is the second round of interviewing with Dr. Fareed Gargazlu. And we're going to talk today about whatever comes from our minds. It's going to be a lot less structured, a lot less topic oriented than the last time. And we're just going to kind of gab in a more informal way. So tell me about your greatest experience as a doctor. What, what do you love about what you do? Wow. <laughs> well, um, that's a, d a very complex question, obviously, but I can tell you probably the best way to answer that is to tell you um, a story. And I think more stories, stories, All right. more stories are best. This is the best. fourth story, yeah, I think. Exactly. And the story has to do with um, when I was applying uh, to medical school back in the 1980s. Um, this was actually an interesting time because apparently it was one of the di most difficult times uh, to get into medical school and so forth. And I'm sure people who are trying to go to medical school these days uh, find that it's not so easy. And then it was exceptionally difficult. And, and if you were lucky enough to get an interview and get a chance to talk to somebody, you would really want to make the best of that few minutes that you had. And then people would all ask all kinds of questions during these interviews. And I remember when I, I, I went to school at Johns Hopkins and in that interview, the person asked me, so um, you want to help humanity, don't you? And, and uh, he was very surprised when I said, no, that's not the reason I want to go to medical school. And I, it shocks you to hear that, but the truth is that, and I said, you know, if I wanted to help humanity, there would be so many other ways, better ways to help humanity than being a physician. That's not the truth. The truth is, the reason I want to be a physician, and it's been true for all my career, is because I love what I do. And if I love what I do, then when I do it for someone, that love translates into doing the best possible job for them, taking care of them as a human, as opposed to a disease, which is how it's done in many places. And, and believe it or not, after the initial shock, the interviewer actually got a smile on his face and he said, this is the type of person we want to have at Johns Hopkins. So I don't know if my grades were good enough, but it's certainly my, the passion that I had and then I have carried along. So, it's imp so when you ask me what is the greatest in medicine, the greatest is that I can do a job and never think of it as a job and be able to get that type of fulfillment. Now, whether you're a physician, whether you're whatever it is that you do in life, if you love everything you, about it, then you, you're not looking forward to the end of the day. You're looking forward to more of the same. Not living for the weekends the way a lot of people do. Exactly. And this is an example of where passion and love come through. And were your grades good enough? Like uh, on the... They were good. They were good. But, but I can tell you that uh, th that discussion elevated them to a whole different level. Right. And it's an unusual answer to begin with because people are very aware. Interviewers, interviewees, they're very... Interviewees especially are aware of the right thing to say. Mm -hmm. I'm here for the, the values of this organization and I'm here for da 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 da. And the people uh, who are hearing these answers, on some level they may know it's not necessarily true because in almost no case is it actually true. But uh, this is what on paper is supposed to be said because that's the system that, that's been created and we all know how to abide by it. Yes. So w when you've broken it in a way and also worked within it at a higher level, I think that's fantastic. Well, thank you. And I think that that's actually a very important point about life in general. Um, you, you don't need to be a rebel. You can be a free thinker. You can be an honest thinker. Work within life. Understand the situation. Have that situational awareness that so many people talk about without even knowing sometimes what it means. Just by telling the truth. Yeah. I mean, not, not blurting out certain things that are just, you know, you really shouldn't say, but by speaking to a higher truth, which is what you did. Absolutely. And I think that, that liberates you all your life. And, uh, and I think that now, after so many years, uh, when I sit with my patients, uh, they see the truth. 
They see that honesty. They see that, uh, that, that I love what I do. I really do. Every day I want to be better at what I do. And I love the fact that what I do makes somebody better, makes, heals them, and helps them. But if I came at this purely from that helping people kind of thing, then to be honest, I'd be much more effective if I were a priest or if I were so many other things. And, and that would be, um, that would, that's an important uh, self-realization. You gotta know yourself. Because there's a lot of self-focus you gotta have, studying the stuff, making sure that your hands work and, and sure. everything. Yeah, you, we, if you wanna help people but you really don't love what you do, as you said, you're not going to be very effective. Right.